Hello! Before I forget, next week I'm gonna get the XE4 and the 27mm and I will be doing a video to let you guys know what I think about it. So now let's talk about the 16mm lenses. I'm not gonna say a lot about this, I'm gonna stay short and sweet due to the nature of these lenses, they're very similar. I have been surprised in good using these lenses a lot lately and I think the 16mm is an amazing focal length. I'm gonna tell you the pros and the cons, what I think about this lens right after the intro. Okay, release dates. The f1.4 was released in April 2015 versus the f2.8 version that was released in March 2019. The f1.4 has two stops of light over the f2.8 version and that means you have a great bokeh and you have a lot of light that comes in. So if you're someone who needs to have light, then you should go with the f1.4 version. On the other end of the spectrum though, the f2.8 version goes to f22 versus f16. So if you need to have less light than the f 2.8 is the way to go. In terms of weight, we had 375 grams versus 155 grams, which is less than half the weight of the f1.4 version. And uh, if you're someone who travels a lot or you need to be light package, obviously this is the choice for you. In terms of weather resistance, if you're someone who goes in humid or dusty environments, they both are weather resistance. The fact that this one came out in 2015, allowed them to add the weather resistance wherein lenses prior to that don't have it. So this is a huge plus, an f1.4 version with the weather resistance. This to me is already practically everything I need from a lens. In terms of size, the f2.8 is literally half the size of the f1.4. In fact, if you look at the filter thread, you see 49 millimeters versus 67 millimeters, and that alone tells you everything. One thing to keep in mind is the focusing speed. In terms of focus, this one is way faster than the f1.4 version. Now, I don't shoot film with Fujifilm, so for video, I don't care, uh, but the truth is that I like to shoot Leica M, and as we all know, this is a manual camera, so, I don't care if the autofocus is better on one or the other, it's fast enough for my needs. I did a few shots for a comparison. I kept the same settings. I shot them both on the same X-T3 on a tripod. Uh, they were shot in classic chrome straight out of the camera so that you can see the depth of field, you can see the colors, and you can see the performance of these two lenses. Here we go. Yesterday was Easter, so I used the f1.4 version to shoot all the photos of the family. Um, I used a 35mm Kodak uh, preset to make the, the, the photos look very genuine, very candid, very uh, everyday-like photos, so you will see that now on these shots. The one thing that I like a lot is the fact that you can isolate your subject. Even though it's a 16mm, so it's quite wide, you can really isolate the subject and have a lot of other things in the shot that explain or that tells the viewer the story as to what's going on. Here we go. If you like my channel or my content, please subscribe, that helps me a lot. Thank you. 
I want to take up a bunch of additional points, such as the fact that this obviously is a 16 mil, so there is going to be some distortion because it's a wide angle lens, but nothing that Lightroom won't fix automatically with the raw files. And if you use it for real estate, you will have to fix your verticals. In my opinion, this is good for real estate, landscape photography, everyday shoots, street, documentary. So you, you can really use it for pretty much everything as long as you don't need this uh, tight crop. I wouldn't use this for portrait. I'm sure you can, I'm sure I would be able to, but this wouldn't be the type of lens that I would use for portrait. If you want to get real close to your subject, I'm gonna show you a few photos here. You can, and that is great. In fact, you can see in this photo of the thermometer how close I am to it, and uh, that was just for fun. I took another photo also with all the sauces, and you can see how close I am to uh, all these bottles. This can be really fun, but it can also be very practical. I'm sure if I use this for one of my upcoming weddings, it can be very useful. So you can really get into the action and you can get a lot of uh, people into the shot without being fisheye or being like the 10 to 24, which tends to be a little bit too wide. So I think it is a great choice to use it for this very purpose. Thanks a lot for watching and let me know if you guys use a 16 mil or not, or if you're planning to buy one, which one are you going to buy? And like always, stay tuned, keep shooting, keep smiling, and I see you in my next video. Take care, cheers.